All righty. So, yeah, it means a lot to me to be chatting with you because your team is my favorite Xfinity team. Well, thank you. Yeah. I, I, I saw your team race for the first time last month when I attended my first Xfinity race, and I saw the red and white number four car on the racetrack. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I have a list of questions that hopefully you have the answer for, and there's about maybe 40 of them. Okay. All righty. So uh, where are you originally from? Yeah, East South Carolina. Nice. Is that a good place? I like it. Born and raised. Nice. I'm, I'm originally from Estes Park, Colorado. Yes, sir. Yeah, you'll have to go there sometime. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, yeah, what made you get into motor racing? My father was uh, kind of an outlaw drag racer and stuff. He just been around and raced hard and hot rods all my life. Ah, cool. What was being a race team owner like in the 1980s? Way different than the day. It was way more relaxed. It wasn't. It wasn't a business then. It was a. Uh, it was something you did for enjoyment. You worked a regular job. Actually worked for another race team, and then worked on my stuff at night. Uh, some of the people that worked on the race team, uh, James Hilton's that I worked on, would help work on my car at night. James would let me keep it over there. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just. It was a buddy system. You didn't have any paid laborers to work on a on an Xfinity car, which was a sportsman car at that time. Mm. Uh, you know, we worked for a company that you were paid, but it was very poor pay for the hours we worked for sure. Ah, pretty cool. What was James Helton like to work with? James was a fun guy. He was a funny character. He, he liked to keep it interesting all the time. Uh, Jumpster, so to speak. He just keep it going. He, he worked you hard, but he was fun to work hard for. Yeah, he seemed pretty cool. I remember at the Gatorade duels a few years back, he tried to get into the Daytona 500, and he almost did. Almost got in there, yes, sir. Yeah, so that was pretty cool to see. <laughs> what was the, what was the reason your team took a hiatus between the eighties to two thousand three? I got divorced and had to go raise my children. Ah, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of tough. I I went through a family came into play to be sure my kids got raised right. Yeah, that's good on you. I. I kind of know what divorce is like. My parents divorced a few years back. That's tough. Yeah. What was the main reason you restarted the race team? I always had plans of doing it, but the main reason was to race my son, Curtis. Ooh. To get him back involved in it. You know, he was already involved, raced all his life. Get him in, involved in the business, get him hands-on experience. I want him to know that life. Actually, you know, that, that business racing was growing in that era, and you were making decent money as an employee, and it was something I could train him instead of him going to school, which he chose not to go to college. He wanted to race. Uh, all righty. That makes a lot of sense. And what was working with Morgan Shepard like? Morgan Shepard's a great guy. We all have our different ways of how we get things across. Ooh. And sometimes we think people are hard to understand, and some people never stay around Morgan long enough to understand him. He's a very dedicated to the sport of racing, NASCAR. Mm. He's still trying to be in the business as a car owner now, mm. but it was a fabulous time. He, he was a uh, he was serious about his racing. When he put a helmet on, he, it went from fun factor to let's go race hard. That's really awesome. Yeah, 
I have tremendous respect for Morgan. He always seems like a cool guy. Yes, sir. What was working with Jason White like? Jason was a good guy. Jason was a good racer. It's just things never worked out money-wise to keep him in the car. He's mm. still in the sports, you know, uh, in the marketing end of it. And, mm. You know, I even drove in my earlier days on dirt races, local races and stuff. Hey, you find out where your real niche is and where you can be the most important to help the sport grow because bottom line is we all care about the sport and making a fair living. Ah, cool. That's That makes a lot of sense. What was your reaction when Curtis Davis led your team's first laps in Bush Series competition at Phoenix? Well, I, I'm not a an emotional person in that respect, or or uh, go clapping in the sky or anything like that. You know, clapping hands kind of guy. I'm just it was well deserved. It was something we hoped to do more of together that we didn't get to do that way. But, but it was exciting. You know, to know you were you were the main reason behind that car that was leading the race. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. What was working with PJ Jones like at Watkins Glen? <laughs> that was amazing. He was, he was a very fast road racer, hard on equipment. Uh, you really needed good stuff for him, but he was very fast. Yeah. Super fast on Yeah, and he's the son of Parnelli Jones, I believe, so I'm not that quite sure. So I'm not quite surprised about that. <laughs> yes, sir. What was PJ's reaction to blowing an engine early on in the race? Yeah, uh, I hate to say it, but it's a typical race car driver. Told me to get another opportunity. I'm going on down the road. Hmm. All righty. That makes a lot of sense. And what was working with Eric McClure like? Eric's a very good, well-educated gentleman in the sport. He he had a different perspective, and he tried to take racing to a neater, cleaner level with Ooh. him and, and being more professional. He was probably the first one in our organization we had as a driver to try to professionally help our image instead of the, the redneck clothes and not looking good. You know, he, he, huh. he was spot on. I very respect what he had and what he brought to the table. We wouldn't be where he, we are today without some of the things we were able to learn from that relationship as well with his partners. That's great to hear. And it's great to see that a guy like him can have an impact on a good team that's good. Yes, sir. What was the reason you selected J.R. Fitzpatrick for the 2007 road course races? I had met J.R. through Ben Barnes at Barnes Racing Engines in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, ben Barnes did their uh, Canadian engines for the Cash Course Series. It ooh. was very successful. They wanted to break into this series and, and have J.R. run some. Xfinity races, oh. and it was just a fit that happened one day when we were, uh, JR and them, they had a guy, I can't remember his name, drove their other car, but he had, he had come and pick engines up sometimes, and he was there, and we got to talking, and we worked the deal out, you know, to take him and run him a few races, and hmm. see if they wanted to go that route or not. JR was a heck of a road course racer as well. I didn't get to work with him on any ovals. He was very fast, hard on equipment, but he would have been very good had they found proper funding to continue on. Ah, alrighty. Were you at the 2007 race in Montreal? Yes. What was your reaction to the controversial and chaotic finish? with Robbie Gordon and Marcus Ambrose and a few other guys. Vince, I'm here with Robbie Gordon. Got out of his race car, hopped on the roof, saluted the fans. Very rough racing there at the end. Robbie, what happened? 
Well, um, if you want to know my opinion, I won the race. So um, I completed all the laps. And if you've seen this happen before, guys get spun when they slow down. That's exactly what happened with Marcus. He spun when I slowed down, and they tell me I'm going to go back to 17th. It's not the way it is. It's happened many times. They set precedents before, and we'll appeal it. We won this race. You chose not to go uh, the, do the black flag and stay out on the racetrack. I went back NASCAR. to position after I was spun like it's happened many times before, okay? Thank you, Robbie. Guys? Let's hear now, from we, him. We do have Marcus Ambrose. We only have a minute here, Marcos. Your emotions, your thoughts, what happened. You knew that there was going to be an attack from Robbie Gordon, the 50. Yeah, 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 I'm devastated. You know, I promised myself when I came to NASCAR that I've been given such a chance. And even if I have the worst day, I'm not going to be mad. And I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed, you know. I feel bad for Kingsford Ford, my, my team, you know. It's just uh, this close, you know. An amazing attitude for a guy who's had the heartbreak of the day. Good on you, man. That's that's very respectful. I respect that view. That's great. Good on you, man. Uh, what was being what was being a team owner at Mexico City like? It was different, for sure. Uh, two of the three years we raced there, I actually helped drive my transporter off down there. Seen a different country, rode right on some really rough roads. Experienced it firsthand, you know, flying in and and driving in as well. Very challenging. I, I'm proud to, that I was able to be a part of that experience, but I'm also proud we don't go back there anymore and have to take our equipment in that country and try and get in and out of there. Yeah, I, I kind of noticed on the map that Mexico City is quite a bit of ways away from the Order, so that must be tough to drive yeah. all the way down there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't. I mean, the drive wasn't horrible with two drivers. They had stops scheduled in there that worked out. Uh, it was very organized. NASCAR done an extremely well job of getting the scene out of there and, and having everything lined up, you know, with our secretaries to get the right paperwork for us to go in and out. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, I have a lot of friends that are Mexicans. I do business with some. Yeah. And, and But at Mexico City, it's just not where I felt like we needed to be, but that's my opinion. Ah, uh, all righty. I understand that opinion, and I respect it. So, uh... How did your team's relationship with Mike Wallace start in 2010s or so? Mike was out of the ride, and uh, we had Daniel Quinn in the car, mm -hmm. and we were short-funded. NASCAR was short on fields. We were trying to do a starting park, and I asked Mike to do a few starting parks. Mm -hmm. uh, we kind of mutually agreed to figure out how to race together. Uh, he had talent. He had a name. He had the look. He was very respected in the garage and with the media. And I'd have to say Mike took my team further with his hmm. abilities and his connections than any other one person did at one time. Ah, so he kind of took you guys to the next level? Yeah, he took us to where we really got respect from media. Media noticed us, started talking about us, interviewing. And uh, Mike's just a stand-up guy. You couldn't ask for a better person. That's great to hear. And did your team have any sort of partnership with Jimmy Means' team when Wallace drove one single race for them in 2009? No, sir. We didn't have a uh, relationship. 
relationship with Jimmy, although Jimmy and I are great friends, we did not have a relationship. All righty. So that was separate from you guys then. All righty. Yeah. What was working with Jeremy Clements like? They had a, their family did engines and, you know, Jeremy's a great driver as well. Just funding's never lined up for them to go to the next level. Hmm. I really don't know what to say other than he's, he's a talent. And unfortunately in our sport, there's a lot of talent. And Jeremy's one of them. Yeah. He can win races. He's won a race in his family's car. But it's more about funding and what you can bring to the table now than it is how good drivers you are. All righty. Yeah, that's, that kind of – yeah, I've seen a lot of – there's a lot of talents in the sport that if they had the proper equipment, you know, would actually be a winning car. They just don't get the opportunity like it used to be, you know? Yes, sir. What made you select numbers such as 01 and 04 for your nationwide cars? What's the significance of those numbers? The numbers were zero and, and double zero. Uh, I had four in the 80s when uh, Joe Henry Thurman drove. That was his number on the short tracks. Ooh. And we adopted it and ran it on the speed race when he was running the short track races out of his pocket and we were running the, the mile, mile and mile and a half races they told us on our deal. We switched over to the number four. Uh -huh. We originally was double zero or tried to be double zero because of Freddie Smith, who was a local dirt racer from Gaffney, and Charlie Blanton was zero. So zero was because of Charlie Blanton, and when we were double zero, it was because of Freddie Smith, this local hometown boys that done good from the Gaffney, South Carolina racetrack and area. Ah, all righty. That makes a lot of sense. Sounds like a pretty good number, I'll say. <laughs> so uh, what was John Middlebrook like as the chief appellate officer for NASCAR? He was good. He, he did a great job. Uh, you know, we, uh, we had some conversations. He, he worked hard for the sport, making the sport get better. Hmm. He was a good part in making things better with him thus far. It's very hard and proud to have worked with him. Hmm. Pretty cool. That's good to hear. And uh, what was working with Brad Teague like? Brad was a heck of a racer. Uh, he got a lot out of stuff back in the day, many years ago in the age. I mean, he won races with the food country car. They had good times. As he got older and, and flew country, chose to go a different right way, we were able to work with him and run some races. And he did us a good job. Good to hear. And what was racing at Montreal like in 2010 as a team owner with Mike Wallace? It was very challenging. We broke a track bar that race. Uh. And we, I repaired it and never lost a lap. Ooh, wow. The track was so I uh, repaired it under caution. It broke when the caution came out. Oh. And he was able to keep caught up. We went behind the wall, and I took and, and uh, wedged a 3 h drive ratchet in between the bar and welded it together. Awesome. Without losing the lesson. <laughs> That's we were pretty innovative that race, you know? Yeah. We didn't have spare parts back in the day. We had to just make it work. Yeah, and that's that's very respectful. That's really cool, man, that you can finish it and fix it without losing a lap. That's that's really cool. We had a caution. It was a long caution. He got caught up, and we, we had a welder on the truck. We got it out. We had jack stand ready. We had tools laid there, and when he got in there, the bar was broke, so I just took the ratchet and went Wedged it and in the bar and welded around it. Away we went. Finished the race. Had a great time there. That's great to hear. 
Yeah, I always liked the Montreal races. They were they were very unpredictable. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. What was your reaction to all the action at the inaugural race at Road America in 2010? It was good. I don't remember where we finished that race, but we had some good runs at Road America. It was a mm. strategy track. You know, we had a lot of cautions at the end that had been, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. That track's just got a lot of slow speed corners, and you can't pass from a long part of the racetrack and people tend to run over each other if they're faster than you in those parts. Made for exciting racing. Yeah, cool. What was your, oh wait, uh, who is your favorite sponsor that your team has worked with? Yeah, our current Flex Seal, Bill Swift, has been a great guy to work with. Uh, he always brings us to his Christmas party going there this weekend. His products are great. He's he's always done things to continue to help our team grow as we're also have marketing his products and his new products he continues to come out with. I'd have to say he's been the best one to work with and, and the most fun to be around. That's awesome. Christmas parties are always fun. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> Oh, yeah. What was your reaction to your team picking up a top 10 finish at Dover in 2011? Well, it was me. It, it was good. We just were very excited. Uh, you know, there again, like I said a while ago, I don't show a lot of emotion over mm -hmm. top 10s and leading laps. Uh, we still are waiting to win a race, and we hope to do that one day before we leave the sport. Yeah, and I'm I'm really pulling for you guys because, you know, I would have to say that, you know, that your team deserves to win a race sooner or later because of all you put in the sport. So I, I'm really pulling for you guys soon. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. What was working with Lawson Ossenbach like? Lawson Ossenbach. He is a tremendous guy. He and I go by when I had took my break from racing, I got into building and manufacturing racing go parts, mm. and Matt Lawson at a at a WKA race, and I was building and selling twister racing chassis. And they were kind of getting their butt kicked with the Coyote chassis, and we worked out a deal and got him on a go kart, and they actually won races instantly. Uh, he, he became a tremendous road racer. He's good in the sports car series. He runs in Trans Am and all. Mm. Uh, they win over there. And then we had an opportunity through Justin Marks and his partnership to do some things with Lawson. And, and it was a, a fun reunion and to be around his dad and his family. And he's a great racer. We may hopefully get to work with him some more this year at some road courses. Yeah, that's really cool. He seems like a pretty cool guy. <laughs> yes, sir. What was, your re what was your reason for selecting Ross Chastain as your driver a few years back? We just watched Ross, and Dave Butch had mentioned we needed to watch him. Dave was working for me at the time. Mm -hmm. And, and Ross, Ross was a fast racer. He'd done some work uh, racing for a Tory. I watched him run Mark Smith stuff at Homestead, and we approached him about talking. Uh, we were actually hoping he had more money than he did. Unfortunately, he had spent all his money, the majority of his money, in those other years trying to get noticed. And he got noticed by a lot of people, and, and we took him on with very little money, and we honed his talent, and he helped us grow because he was a hard racer as well. Awesome. Did the watermelon sponsorship come from Chastain or something? The, there was very little watermelon money there. There was some that did come with Chastain and goes with him wherever he goes. Uh, the, the deals with Dover and New York mm. was about 20% 
the money we sold, it was bills that my marketing department come up with and slogans. And he, Ross, only had the capability to put in the watermelon slogans, slogans on a decal on the watermelon to the grocery store chains. But they have tried to do that for many years. Mm. But Tony Pescaro, my head of marketing, was the first one that was ever successful at selling that program mm. to anybody. We sold that program and made it work. Ross and them just were able to put stickers on watermelons. Awesome. That's great to hear. What is working with Scott Legacy Jr. like? Well, we only worked out one race with him. He does a good job. Uh, hmm. we, we didn't get to finish what we would like to have had, but he done a great job. Uh, we pushed the car in the trailer after the race. We didn't have to do any work on it to go to uh, Daytona or Talladega the next race. He's interested in continuing the race and do those things at certain speedway races. Mm. A great family, his dad and, and all came. We had a good time. It's, there again, it's just about so much money needed to do what we do and keep all these people in the seat. That's great to hear and good to hear, man. And what made you select the number 15 for one of your cars this year? That was all that was available. Ah, all righty. I didn't want to get a real high number. I like to stay with low numbers. Ah. And that, that, that was the lowest number that was available when we wanted to do that fourth program. All righty. Were you at the autumn race, at X, the Xfinity race at ISM Raceway last month? Yes. I was at that You're race. You're talking about which race now? Uh, the race in Phoenix. Yes, sir. I was at that race, and that was the first time that I saw your cars on the racetrack. Yes, sir. I was there. Yeah, and it was a very pretty sight to see your race cars on the track for the first time, because that was a Thank first you. for me. Good. Glad to hear that. Yeah. Have you worked with any foreign race car drivers next to Catherine Leggy or what, or whatever that's pronounced? Catherine Leggy is the only foreign race car driver we've worked with. Ah. All righty. We've had conversations with others, but nothing ever panned out. Ah, all righty. How did you get the Safeway sponsorship? I'm trying to remember which... Which one that was on? Hmm. I might need to look it up very quick. But your car, it it's. Yeah, let me look it up very quick. It, it was a grocery store, wasn't it? Yeah, Safeway Grocery Store, yeah. Where were they on that? I'll have to look it up very quick. It was, it was on Joe Nemechek's car, I believe, at Bristol. And that might have been a deal with Joe Ah, all righty. Which road course track do you like going to best between Road America, Watkins Glen, Mid-Ohio, and Montreal? Road America. Ah. I always like that track as well. That's a good choice, I'd have to yeah. say. <laughs> yes, sir. What was working with Mike Skeen like at Watkins Glen? With who, sir? Mike Skeen. It was a fun time. He done us a great job. We actually called on him because we didn't have anyone we, we felt like to get the job done and, and do what we needed. Great, great person. Ah, good to hear. What was your reaction when Ross and Justin Allgaier went at it at Watkins Glen earlier this year? Justin Allgaier, hard into the wall. So Allgaier, one of the drivers we expected at the beginning of the season would be running for a championship and be a competitor here at this race into the wall and it looked like nobody around him well this is the risk i love the call to come get tires because it opened up the strategy but you have to take care of your car 
back in the pack. Something has got the seven turned around. It's a pretty heavy damage to that right rear quarter panel. It looked like in the inner loop, maybe getting through the inner loop just got that car unsettled. Yeah, it looked like the exit of the bus stop, maybe. Right in front of Dale Jr. Dale, he's right underneath you. Yeah, let's see what happened here. Going through there side by side is almost impossible for those guys. And you can see right there, just a difficult situation for all drivers involved. And, eight, and, and he gets the worst of it. And yeah, Ross Chastain just gets in so deep. He drives into the left rear quarter panel. And then I think politely said, hey, I've already spun him, so let me spin him completely out and not spin myself out. And you see the contact with that tire barrier. And yeah, this is a battle for 14th place. Custer to the inside. Look at the seven, though. He doesn't want to go by the four. Is he looking for a little payback here as they're coming through the, the inner loop? Out of the inner loop, into the carousel. What is he going to do? He gives him a little bit of bumper. Oh, uh, yeah, he sent him, sent him into the tire barrier right there. Payback from earlier. Going to kill him. Ross Chastain in I the fence. Kill him. This is going to cost a lot of damn money. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's kind of tough, yeah, yeah. You know, with Ross already left us, I would, would hope him and Justin had a score to settle. They would have settled it off of the track instead of tearing up equipment for both of them. Uh, you know, but when you're buckled up in them cars and Justin's defense and you're in the heat of the battle and you've had issues with that driver in other races, you tend to forget whose car he's in. You know, for the most part, there's nobody in the sport. Even though we do it sometimes, the drivers do it, we want to cost the car owners any money. There's nobody in the sport that wants that to happen. Yeah. Sometimes our sport breeds a little anger and, and makes you go at it. Yeah. I'm with you on that, man. That's That's a respectable view. I'm with you on that. What made you pick Stephen Light as one of your drivers for this year? He'll start 35th and number zero, Team JD Motorsports.com Chevrolet from Ligonier, Pennsylvania, Garrett Smithley. Starting 33rd and number 15, Line Tech Services Chevrolet from Richland, North Carolina, Tyler Matthews. Starting 29th to number 4, Team JD Motorsports.com Chevrolet from La Barada, California, Ryan Vargas. Starting 25th to number 01, Team JD Motorsports Chevrolet, Asheville, North Carolina's Stephen Light. Ooh, Stephen Light is back. Haven't heard from him in years. Pretty cool, and I heard about some of his rough period that he went through when he was out of the sport. I've kind of heard about that. Yeah. Okay. I kind of went through a little bit of a rough patch a few years back around the same time that he did, but I'm glad to hear that he's doing better and is with the race yeah. team again. Yes, sir. Do you think your team will win a race sometime in the near future on the pace that it's running? We're, we're definitely improving every year. Uh, we've got drivers that are continuing to get better. Uh, it seems like once we get a driver in place and we're on that path to be good, somebody snags them from us. And, and that takes them to the next level instead of us being able to find money. And mm -hmm. I don't begrudge people moving on so long as they're respectful in how they move on. Mm -hmm. 
makes a lot of sense. And uh, this is my last question on the list before we conclude, but uh, what is your favorite classic film involving motor racing? I guess it would have to be Days of Thunder. Yep. Most of the people I've asked have said that, and it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> All righty. Thank you so much, man, for making the time for me. Yes, sir. And you have a great day, okay? You too. And I'll let you know when my ebook comes out. Let me know, sir. Thank you for your time. No problem. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Yeah, that turned out very well. Turned out very well, and I will keep doing this in the future. Great guy, great experience. <laughs>